We're going to go through three of the most common pieces of documentation that you will ever do as a junior doctor. The admission note, the progress note, and of course the discharge summary. First up is the admission note. The first thing that you do when a patient comes into hospital is if they're accepted under a specific unit, then you need to admit them. And then what you need to do is you need to complete an admission note. Now, the admission note takes into account everything that happened for that particular patient, what their story is, what their exam findings are, you know, what their background is, and essentially what's going on with them and why they are in hospital in the first place. So the admission note needs to summarize every little thing like that all in one document. Now, let's go through the structure of the admission note. It can be quite overwhelming, but we'll take you through the start and how I complete admission notes. I don't do it perfectly, but you know, everyone has their own particular way of doing admission notes. This is just my particular structure that I remember and I think it's really, really straightforward. So the first thing that I do is, you know, you have to title the admission note for whatever unit it is. So if you're working in the surgical department, then maybe it's a general surgery. So you just type it in as general surgery admission note. You might put in your name and you might put in your title. So you might say uh, Gen Surge HMO. HMO stands for Hospital Medical Officer. And then what you could do is you could put in your pager number so that if nursing staff or anyone else who sees this admission note wants to get in contact with you, they can see your pager number and then actually page you for a message about that particular patient. Next up is the one line summary that completely encapsulates that patient's you know, reason for admission. And this can be a little bit tricky to do and you don't have to do it the first time you write the admission note, but you know, it might be something that you come back to at the start after you've taken all the history, done all the exam findings, gone through all the nitty gritty, and then you've summarized what goes on with it. But essentially what you do is this, you might have a, you know, a 35 year old male who presents with acute appendicitis, or I might actually spell appendicitis properly, appendicitis. And, you know, or it could be something like, you know, 27 year old female, um, two days, two slash seven just means two days. You know, anything slash seven equals days, slash seven equals days, slash 52 equals weeks, slash 12 equals months. And what else do we do? I think that's pretty much it. Um, or oh, slash 24 equals hours. So they might say eight slash 24 abdo pain. All that means is that there's been eight hours of abdominal pain. So these are the sorts of abbreviations that we use in medicine. So yeah, another example of the first line summary that might be, uh, you know, that you might put at the start of your admission note might be a 27 year old female presents with two days of abdominal pain and then for investigation, FIX. Next up, what I would do is I'd do the HOPC, which is the history of presenting complaint. What happened? What's their story? Do they have pain? Did they have any specific symptoms? Did it get better or worse with everything? You go back to medical school and you can sort of go through that framework. Generally, it's, it's called Socrates. So um, it starts off with like the site, the time of onset. Then it's like the C stands for something. Um, I'm not sure. And then it's like, you know, how bad it is, any associated symptoms, the timing, you know, any exacerbating factors and, you know, other stuff like that. But essentially, you're just trying to be a detective in this bit, the history of presenting complaint, work out what's the story and why they're presenting to the hospital at that particular time. You know, why not yesterday? Why not tomorrow? Why they've come in right now? And when you isolate that particular thing, 
then you get down to the nitty gritty as to why they're actually coming in and what their problem is. So, you know, you might just generate sort of a story, say if we're, if we're doing this 35 year old guy who's coming with acute appendicitis, you essentially say, you know, acute onset, um, uh, central abdo pain four days ago, intermittent, but then worsened last night and presented to ED because 10 out of 10 severity, you know, associated fever, nausea and vomiting and loss of appetite. It's these sorts of things that you like just mention. I mean, you'll get better at it over time, but you essentially just go through the story as a whole and you, you go through six sequentially what happened in chronological order. Next up, after you've done that, you probably go through their past medical history. So that's what I would do there. PMHX just stands for past medical history, you know. And for, for surgical patients, you mainly want to know their past surgical history, but also do they have any medical conditions that might need to be optimized before they have an operation, if they need one, you know. And like these sorts of things may be, these sorts of things may be associated with medications. So they might be on blood thinners or they might be on insulin for diabetes or, you know, maybe they're taking some immunosuppressants for some sort of condition, you know, like these sorts of medications, like they light up in your head because they need to be changed, stopped or withheld before going into operating theaters because, you know, surgeons don't like things to bleed and they don't like things to go haywire in the surgery when a patient's asleep. So if surgeons can optimize things to make the surgery for them so much easier, then they will. And yeah, that, that, that's the main thing you're trying to deduce out of this. But it's also to get a general, um, you know, a general understanding of that patient as a whole. You know, do they have a lot of conditions going on with them or do they have not that much at all? So working out a structure that fits with you is the best way to go about the admission note. So you go through their past medical history, maybe they have, you know, type two diabetes, but it's just diet controlled, no medications. Maybe they have some asthma on regular inhaled corticosteroids. And I guess with each condition, like it goes back to sort of medical school days where you wanna stratify the severity of the medical condition at hand. If they have diabetes, you know, what's their level of glucose control? What's their HbA1c? If their HbA1c is like 10, then it's probably not that well controlled and that's probably worth noting because you might need to make a referral to the diabetes doctors, like, you know, diabetes nurse educators, or perhaps even the endocrine team for acute, you know, optimization and stabilization of their blood sugars. For asthma, like that's a particular good one for, you know, the anesthetics, because they wanna look after their airway. And if they've had a particular exacerbation, or perhaps, perhaps they might even be in an acute flare up right now, they might need to optimize that treatment before they can intubate the patient or give them a general anesthetic. So, you know, these sorts of things, it's, it's important to know what medical conditions they have, but also how bad they are and if they're controlled or not controlled. So, you know, you can get an idea for asthma, like have they ever been to ICU for an admission? Have they ever been to hospital at all? You know, what's their level of flare ups and if they, use regular medications like steroids to suppress it or do they just take you know ventolin whenever they need it so these sorts of things you need to weigh up um, as i said for the surgical patients but also most patients you know you want to know their past surgical history if a patient you know is, you think is having appendicitis has actually had their appendix removed three years ago then it's obviously not gonna be appendicitis. 
So having details of their operation history is super, super important. And having a look on the exam later on for any particular scars might indicate a past surgery, then that's gonna be crucial information for you. Maybe this guy hasn't had any surgeries before. Maybe he's on no, well, he's on the inhalers for asthma and maybe he takes a multivitamin. After that, you, you, know, you wanna make a comment on their allergy status. So I just put, you know, nil known drug allergies here, NKDA. They maybe have a particular allergy. Um, and I think useful ones are to particular medications because that influences how we treat different conditions. If they've got an infection and they need to be covered with antibiotics, but they have a penicillin allergy or an allergy to some other class of antibiotic, then that might impact what we can give them and what we, can, what we would use instead. So having this information is super, super duper important. Other things that you might wanna comment on is their family history. You know, potentially they might have significant family history with certain genetic conditions or even just common things like bowel cancer or prostate cancer. Anything that might be relevant for that case is useful to note down in this area. Um, let's just say father died of an AMI at age 50, which is essentially young. You know, it's very young for a person to die of a heart attack if they're age 50 it would be less relevant if the patient is like 80, 85 years old. It's, it suggests there's less genetic or you know, inherited factors that might be contributing to that patient's risk of having a heart attack or having cardiovascular disease. After this, that's all the history. I essentially wanna do my observations and do my exam findings. And you know, OBS, you can just look at the chart, you, know, you write down, People might be more specific and write down the specific values of everything. I personally like to look at the values, make a you know, deduction as to what they mean, if they're within the normal limits or maybe they're up on the upper limits of normal, or maybe you just comment on the abnormal values. So I might say, you know, um, mildly hypotensive systolic blood pressure, you know, 100, other OBS within normal limits, afebrile. And it's important to note that like, you know, low blood pressure might mean that the patient is, you know, getting really sick um, because potentially the patient has a higher blood pressure than, than 100. Um, if they're a very like small person or a very skinny person, then a systolic blood pressure of 100 might actually be their normal. You, you need to make like a, you know, an estimated guess as to what that particular value means for that particular patient. And then the other findings you wanna go through is, you know, what their heart sounds like, what their chest sounds like, and, you know, other things like their calves, you know, do they have any like tenderness or swelling in a calf that might suggest a DVT? Um, you know, whereabouts in their abdomen are they particularly sore? And do they have any signs that might point towards specific diagnoses? You know, one that comes to mind is Murphy's sign, which is one for, you know, cholecystitis, inflammation of the gallbladder. And it's when you like press up on their right part of their tummy, get them to take a big breath in, and then that causes pain and you actually can't take a full breath in because the gallbladder stops you from doing that. It has too much pain. If it's for appendicitis, then do they have you know, tenderness at, Mc, at McBurney's point, that's essentially this point in the right part of their lower quadrant where, you know, you press down and they're very, very tender in that area. You want to know if they're peritonitic. That means has the, has the infection or the inflammation spread to everywhere in the abdomen? And, you know, you look for particular signs and symptoms of that. Um, so this is the part of the admission note where you just note down all these things that you find on exam and exams really, really important because you always, I always make a comment apart from the OBS and apart from the exam findings itself, does the patient look well and what are they doing? If the patient's sitting out of bed texting, 
then that's a really good sign. You know, they're not that sick if they can be on their phone texting. But if they're in bed, the lights are off, they're still in their clothes, you know, they're not like even changed. They're like, they're very like, you know, untidy and, you know, maybe there's a vomit bag next to them. That may, that gives off a sicker picture for a patient. So yeah, that that's really, really useful to note. Um, and I guess the, the other things you want to note is if they have any like lines or drips in them. So, you know, maybe they have a catheter in, maybe they have a cannula. Are they on oxygen or are they not? Are they talking in full sentences or do they look like they're very, you know, distressed or uncomfortable? Um, you can obviously just look at a patient and over time you build up your clinical library and you look at the patient and, and you say, well, you look like well patient or you actually don't look that well. So that's really important to note on this part. After that, then that's when you go through your investigations. So it might be any bedside tests, any, and a bedside tests include like ECG, blood sugar, a urine dipstick, things like this. And then you might note, you know, any bloods, any imaging, other tests. They might have done a particularly, uh, like a particular procedure or a special type of study or something like that, I'm not sure. Um, but whatever they are, you can just note that down there. And after that, you know, I think it's a really good time now to give an impression. Um, so you can say, you know, 35 year old male, acute appendicitis, hemodynamically stable, and, 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 and that might be it. You know, you might not need to say anything more than that because essentially if I'm, if I'm thinking, do I need to rush this guy to theater right now to take his appendix out? Is he unstable and is he unwell? And will he become worse and potentially deteriorate before we can, you know, do something to prevent that? And if in that case, we would need to do something urgently if the patient is very, very sick. So you need to comment on, yes, the condition that you think they have or think they might have and then stratify their, you know, severity. How bad is it and how much time do you have to like work with? An idea of a good admission note, is that a patient can like, is that anyone can like look at this text that you've written down and get a really good representation of the patient that you saw. And they can essentially, you know, look at that and say, all right, this, they making decisions from the note. So yeah, you want to just like summarize everything succinctly and, uh, you know, give a good representation of the patient that you just saw. After you've done all that, then what you can do is you can do a plan. Um, and I just do some basic things here. I just say admit, you know, general surgery, um, and then I'll do under the particular consultant or the, the boss who's taking in new patients. Um, then you might comment on their, you know, are they eating and drinking or are they fasting? Do they need to withhold any medications? So they might be withholding, you know, blood thinners you know, or something like that. Maybe they're on an aspirin or maybe they're on like a particular other blood thinner like a warfarin or something like that. You might need to withhold or do something else with those. Maybe if they're fasting, they might need some fluids. So you comment on that. And like you just go through the rest of the instructions that you might need to do to, um, to give nursing staff or to other doctors you know, so they can look after this patient. You've gone through and done and everything, but what do we need to do next? That's what's in the plan at the end. Um, the other thing would be, you know, do they need to be consented um, for appendicectomy? Maybe if they're going to theater, do they need to be discussed with anesthetics or the nurse in charge of theater to make sure that they can be put on the emergency list and get operated at some time? maybe overnight or maybe the next day. So you get, you get an idea about this. The, the other thing that you can talk, comment on is you might comment on DVT prophylaxis. You know, if patients are coming in and sitting in bed for a while, they're not moving, you know, stasis is of course the basis. You want to prevent them from getting any blood clots building up in DVT or PE or something like that. So are they just on mechanical prophylaxis with just stockings 
like we have these things called uh, TED stockings, it's like compression stockings, or do they need something more like actual calf compressors, or do we just give them injections of Clexane, which uh, is like a blood thinner itself? So yeah, all this stuff, oh, it's, it's a really basic template that you can follow. There's a few other things, you know, that you can include, like potentially you can include their resus status. So, um, you know, ARP just stands for acute resuscitation plan. And depending on what your hospital system is, you know, they might be for full resus or not for full resus. You might want that patient only for CPR, but not for intubation or something like that. Uh, you know, it depends what system you use, but in our hospital, we just say ARPA if they want everything. So yeah, you, you go through and you, you get a system and there'll be stuff that you, you know, don't include from this template and there'll be stuff that you, you know, include that's more from this template that I haven't, uh, that I haven't put down. Um, but basic structure, you go through the title, you put your name and your page number, you give the first line, like a one line summary about why that patient's in hospital. You go through the history of presenting complaint. You go through their past medical history, their past surgical history, medications and allergies, family history if it's relevant. Then you go through the OBS and exam findings and how they look and then any investigation findings that are relevant. Give an impression and then give a plan. And that's how you do an admission note. So yeah, there you go. Next up, what we will be doing is we'll be going through a progress note. You gotta have a general structure, but also be malleable to change and adapt for the particular patient that you see in front of you. Hopefully that helped. Bye.